Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very nice problem for you guys today. Uh, this problem was number four on the exam uh, for the IMO in 2013. So it was the easiest of the second day's problem. Um, but it was a lot of fun to solve. So if you'd like to try to figure it out, uh, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC. Uh, H is the orthocenter and W is any point on the side BC. Uh, M is the foot of the perpendicular from B. N is the foot of the perpendicular from C. Uh, and then we draw the circumcircle of BNW and uh, CMW. And then we take the points X and Y such that uh, WX and WY are the diameters of those two circles. And we want to show X, Y, and H are collinear. All right. So I'm going to start out by invoking something called McKell's theorem. So I think I've brought it up on my channel once before. Um, I've never done a video on it, um, but it's not too hard to prove. So I'm going to prove it uh, here in the video. But basically, uh, if you have a triangle ABC and you have these three points N, M, and W on the sides of the triangle, and it says that these three circles, uh, B, W, N, C, M, W, and the circle through A, N, and M have to all pass through a common point. So I'm gonna denote the intersection of these two circles by D. And then McKell's theorem says that A, N, D, and M have to lie on a circle. And it's not too hard to prove. So here's the proof, it's just an angle chase. Um, so I'm going to calculate angle NDM, and I'm going to show it's 180 minus angle A. All right, so here we have angle NDM. So angle NDM, angle NDW, and angle MDW have to add up to 360. So NDM is 360 minus NDW minus MDW. And then, but NDW is one of the angles in the cyclic quadrilateral NDWB. So NDW is 180 minus NBW, and we can make the same substitution here. So MDW is 180 minus MCW. Um, and then if you work out the algebra, all the 360 minus 180 minus 180, that goes away. You're just left with NBW plus MCW. But those are two of the three angles in triangle ABC. So their sum has to be 180 minus the third angle. So it has to be 180 minus angle A. So basically we've shown uh, through a little bit of angle chasing that angle NDM is 180 minus angle A. And so that means that A and D M has to be cyclic. And that's exactly what McKell's theorem says, um, that those four points would lie in a circle. So probably going forward in my videos, I'll just cite McKell's theorem, but if you haven't seen it, that's the proof. Okay, so we know that A, N, D, and M are cyclic. Um, now, there's another thing to note. It's not too hard to see that H also lies on that circle um, because angle A and H uh, is 90 degrees and angle A, M, H is also 90 degrees. Um, so those four points have to lie in a circle with diameter A, H. So I'm gonna write that out. So angle ANH is equal to angle AMH is equal to 90. So ANH and M have to lie in a circle. So all five of those points have to lie on the same circle. So ANH DM is cyclic. And so I'm gonna draw that circle in, all right? So where do we go from here? Um, so what I'm gonna do is, so ultimately we wanna show X, Y, and H are collinear. Um, and that, um, so one thing I'm gonna first start by noting is that HD is perpendicular to AD. So that's, so we're gonna use the fact that all five points lie in a circle um, to conclude that. Okay, so I'm gonna draw on those two segments. Okay. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is, so X uh, is the point so that WX is a diameter um, and the same with Y. So I'm going to draw in the centers of those two circles. Uh, so I'm going to call them P and Q. Um, so if I want to show X, Y, and H are collinear, well, 
since P and Q are the midpoints of WX and WY, uh, PQ has to be parallel to XY. Um, and not only that, PQ is also perpendicular to DW because uh, the centers of two circles are perpendicular to the line or to the radical axis. And so if uh, HD is perpendicular to AD um, and PQ is perpendicular to DW and PQ is parallel to XY, then basically instead of showing X, Y, and H are collinear, we can show X, Y, and D are collinear. Um, but we have to show that A, D, and W uh, all lie on the same line. So that's not too hard to show that A, D, and W uh, all lie on the same line. Uh, it looks true in the figure, um, but we can prove it using the radical axis theorem. So I'm gonna show you how we do that here. Um, so BNMC is, is a cyclic quadrilateral. So I'm gonna start out proving that. So angle BNC is equal to angle BMC and they're both 90 degrees. So BNMC is cyclic. And the whole reason I did this is because I wanna use the radical axis theorem on that circle, uh, BNW and CMW. And if I do that, uh, then I get that BN, CM, and DW have to be concurrent. And so the, the radical axis of BNW and BNMC is, is BN. And then CM is also one of those three radical axes. And then if you take the radical axis of BNW and CMW, it's DW. So we have those three segments, BN, CM, DW all have to concur, and therefore they have to concur at point A. And if that's true, then A, D, and W have to be collinear. Okay. So um, I drew the segment through A, D, and W. And as I mentioned before, uh, PQ has to be the perpendicular bisector of DW um, because P and Q are both centers of the two circles. And the line joining the centers is, is the perpendicular bisector of the radical axis. So, since, so I'm going to draw the midpoint of DW. Um, but, but basically, PQ passes through the midpoint of DW, and it's also perpendicular to DW. So we're really almost there. Um, like I mentioned, we want to show X, D, and Y are collinear. But P, E, and Q are the respective midpoints of W, X, W, D, and W, Y. So um, we're, essentially, we're essentially there. So I'm going to write out the rest of the solution. But since P, E, and Q are both the midpoints of W, X, W, D, W, Y, that means that X, D, and Y have to be collinear. Um, and not only that, since PQ is perpendicular to AW, XY has to be perpendicular to AW. Okay, so this is what I just said. Uh, X, D, and Y have to be collinear um, since, since PE and Q are collinear. So, and then also XY has to be perpendicular to AW uh, since PQ is perpendicular to AW. Okay, so... Uh, but if we know that that's true, uh, we also know from up here that HD is perpendicular to AW. So if that's true, that HD is perpendicular to AW, then HD has to lie on that line XDY. Um, and so all four points X, H, D, and Y are collinear, and that solves the problem. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is probably one of the easier IMO problems, um, but I like that I could use Mikkel's theorem because uh, I don't use it that often, um, but I feel like it, it still is a pretty useful theorem. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks everyone.